Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Matt Bernier. The DRF Bets Race of the Day for Friday, November the 23rd is the Grade 2 Hollywood Turf Cup, race number six at beautiful Del Mar. You can bet this card with a DRF Bets account. Sign up at bets.drf.com. Receive a 300% deposit match. Here's the field for the Grade 2 Hollywood Turf Cup. They're going to travel a mile and a half for $200,000. Uh, DRF Southern California analyst Brad Free reports that the number two crew Chief is likely to scratch out of this race. That would leave us with a field of seven. You can download free formulator pass performances on the race of the day event page at drf.com. Access them. Handicap along with us. We'll take the field in post position order. Matt, beginning with the number one beach view, kind of made his name last time out on dirt, upsetting a big name in opportunity. Yeah, he certainly did. And I guess you can look at that one of two ways that perhaps this was a horse in Beachview that continued to improve. And he just, you know what, it was perfect time for that, where you go over there a mile and a half, the distance was right for him. And you were also catching opportunity on the downside of his career. He's now been retired. Um, on the flip side, I kind of look at it and say he was a pretty nice turf horse to begin with. And this distance clearly isn't going to be an issue for him. To me, the key for a horse like this, if you are so inclined to go this way, is how is he going to be ridden down on the inside by Bejarano? I personally think they need to be aggressive because you talk about that scratch of the horse drawn just to the outside. Last thing anyone wants is Ashley Love Sugar just walking on the front end because you know what he's capable of. I think Bejarano and Beachview have to be aggressive. Beachview, one of three next out winners to exit the Cougar the second, uh, uh, to, to exit that race two starts back at Santa Anita on the turf, showing he can run on the turf. He earned a respectable 114 time form U.S. Uh, speed figure for that June 24th race. Let's take a look at the pace projector because as we expect crew chief to scratch, when you go to timeformus.com to access time form PPs, you will note that this pace projector changes in real time. So crew chief's going to be gone. They'll have the five Ashley Love Sugar, the one Beachview out there on the lead. You think Beachview, though, is going to be really aggressively ridden by Bejarano. Yeah, I think it's a, it's twofold because I think his best running style is when he's forwardly placed and he gets into the run. And also, again, I really think not just for their sake, but for everyone else's sake, if you are not part of the Ashley Love Sugar camp, the last thing you want to do is give that horse an inch because we know on his best day he'll take a mile. Millionaire Bigger Picture ships east for Michael Maker, and we've said it so many times on Race of the Day, stakes previews out of the gate, all our DRF TV offerings, it seems. These East Coast horses, they come west, they make hay. Bigger Picture may not be where he was back in 2017 when he won the Grade 1 United Nations, but I still think he's pretty good. His third last time out in the Sycamore, this is a horse that was no match for Zulu Alpha, who came right off the rail, and Arklo, who ran a surprising fourth in his subsequent start, the Breeders' Cup Turf. Bigger picture, last on the Timeform U.S. pace projector, might be up to Mike Smith to get him into the running a little earlier. Yeah, to be honest with you, earlier on in this year, remember, he was supposed to run in the Red Smith, or he was scheduled to last weekend at Aqueduct. And I remember Beer and I talking about it, saying earlier in the year, kind of felt like Bigger Picture might be finally feeling the effects and finally feeling his age a little bit. But he's run respectably throughout the rest of the summer and into the fall. And you brought up the fact that Arklow, who ran fourth in the Breeders' Cup turf, he earned a 93 that day. So I suppose the form has held up a little bit. There is a part of me that looks at it and says, if he can still run his, let's say, B-plus race, he's probably just better than these horses. The, the scratch of his uncoupled stable mate and potentially now a little bit of a slower pace. I agree with you. Mike Smith's got to get him a little bit into the run, I think, earlier than maybe ideal. I think a sneaky long shot in here is next door. That's can't help believing going out for ground motion. This horse was just getting good in the summer of 2017. When he won the Sky Classic at a mile and three eighths, 98 buyer, 127 time form US speed figure, and then something must have happened because he went to the sidelines for over a year. He has now had two starts back. He can give him the first race off the layoff. It was his first start over a year and after all. And last time out in the Sycamore, there just wasn't any pace to set him up. This is a horse that historically runs well third off the layoff, second behind bigger picture in the grade one UN, winner of the grade three cliff cliffhanger back in 2016. I wouldn't be surprised if can't help but leaving is cycling back to his best race. You know, I think something else to keep in mind, take a look at his career and take a look at the times that he has run on less than firm going. It hasn't gone ideal for him. That's exactly what he caught in the Sycamore. You would like to think he's going to catch rock hard going out at Del Mar on, on Friday afternoon. I, I think there's a chance that he gets back to one of his better races. There is a part of me, though, that kind of feels like, sure, I, and the, the points you made about each of the past two races are, are undeniable. You can't argue that. There is just still that part of me that wonders off of that long layoff. Does he still have it in the tank? Can he still go? 
and fire a 100 buyer because I think it's going to take pretty darn close to that to get it done. And there's a part of me also that wonders what kind of price is he going to be knowing that sort of narrative, which is accurate, that the East Coast horses going west usually fare pretty well. There will be a jockey change on the five. Ashley loves sugar. We wish Gary Stevens all the best in his recent retirement. Ashley loves sugar is kind of the West Coast version of bigger picture, isn't he? He's a millionaire. He's as tough as nails. He shows up each and every time. And we kind of thought that Ashley loves sugar lost a little bit of zip off the fastball this year. But you know something? He ran quite well in the John Henry last time out. He carved out some legitimate fractions for that mile and a quarter. And it took a sharp horse in Liam the Charmer to run him down. He is comfortable going to the lead. He is comfortable sitting just off and he should be in prime position when the real running starts. Absolutely. You know, I agree with you. I thought perhaps we had seen his better days behind him. And then all of a sudden that John Henry Turf, he's out there. He said some legitimate fractions time for him, even had one of the internal fractions color coded red. The other speed horses, they finished pretty well behind him, at least a length and a half, if not more. And it did. It took a good Liam the Charmer to come and run him down. I thought it was a fine effort. And again, really, the this one boils down to that pace projector. If he for some reason allowed to get out there and walk the dog on the front end, uh, I think everybody else could be in trouble. Now, it's possible we've seen bigger picture. It's probable we've seen bigger picture's best race. It's probable we've seen Ashley Loves Sugar's best race. Not sure if that's the case with our next three runners. The six Marquis Water has won two out of his last three races. He looks like an up-and-comer for Richard Baltus. He's got a positive formulator fact as well. This barn over the past three years with last out turf route winners going third off the bench, 29% winners, a 342 ROI, and he overcame a slow pace to win last time out at a mile and a quarter. Your thoughts about him stretching out a little bit more. Well, the way that he finished, it makes me think that the additional distance isn't a problem. And then you go three starts back. He ran at a mile and three eighths here at Del Mar and he got the job done. So I don't think this distance will be a problem. The question now is, do you think he's quite good enough for this kind of class test? Because that field that he faced most recently is fine, but it's not nearly as talented as this group is. The thing that I was most taken by is the fact that, like you say, he didn't have much pace to run at. And sure, he had to get pushed on pretty early. But the way that he finished, it gives me the impression that, you know what, his best stride is late again he's going to need to step up significantly from a speed figure standpoint because i do believe right around 100 is what it'll take to win from a buyer standpoint but i don't think that's out of the realm of possibility trip handicappers are going to gravitate to the seven you gotta want them i note three starts back in the del mar handicap at a mile and three eighths have them steadied inside when winner made wide brush shuffled all the way back and steadied to last altered course widest second best that's a pretty good effort then they ran him on dirt throw that race out and last time out in the john henry he was in kind of an awkward position down towards the inside. Big rider switch, I think, to Flavie and Pratt. I'm not worried about the distance. Maybe four to one is actually a fair price. I was kind of hoping he'd drift a bit, but I think a lot of people have seen his trouble. Yeah, agreed. And really, I think it is one of those instances you just you go back and, and if you watch the, the John Henry, if you just look at it on paper, it doesn't really necessarily indicate that there was much issue. You go back and watch the race. Giovanni Franco was just never able to extricate him from down on the inside. And it was just one of those things where he wasn't ever checking or st stopping, but he was never really able to hit his best stride. I think it's better than it looks and only to lose by a length and a half. I think that's promising. This distance isn't going to be an issue for him, I don't think. Um, I guess really it boils down the price if you get the four to one on the morning line i think that's relatively fair i'd probably still want a little bit more but there's also a part of me that wonders does he come down from there does he come into that three to one seven to two range chicago style completes the field i thought he ran quite well when the beaten favorite in this race last year there was not a lot of pace going on he swung five wide turning into the stretch and he came with a good run to just get beat a neck by manitoulin who got the jump on him turning into the lane he looked like he was going to have a nice year in 2018 his first start, the Connolly, he came from far back. He only got beat a length by bigger picture. But if you watch the head on, he was drifting substantially in the lane. And that preceded a very long layoff. So I wouldn't be surprised if Chicago style has continued to have physical problems that have relegated him to only 10 starts as a five-year-old. His return race to me was nothing more than a prep for this. If you believe that Tommy Proctor's got him ready, he has the ability to win this race. But with a lack of pace, he could be in trouble. Yeah, you know, I, Chicago style is the kind of horse that I'm, I'm very torn on. I, I feel like in the John Connolly, I, I thought he was a slam dunk. I didn't think there was a way he could lose. But it, we've we've sort of developed a little bit of a trend with him. He's got these very, very strong kicks, but he just can't quite get there. And then, like you say, he was gone for such a long time. Also worth noting in that lure, he was drifting out down the stretch of that race as well. So, like you say, he's clearly had some physical problems. I expected a little bit more in that lure. I know it's at a mile and it's too sharp for him, but... 
there's just a part of me that does wonder. You know what? Maybe he's going to be that kind of horse. If you believe the three to one morning line, maybe he's that kind of horse that's going to be there, but he's not necessarily a killer to go and get the job done. I, I want to slow. I want to slightly fade him in here. It's a fun race, the Hollywood Turf Cup, always is each and every year. Let's take a look at our top selections. I'm just a big fan of Bigger Picture. I thought his Sycamore was kind of an inoffensive race, but that 96 buyer, the 99 before that in the Kentucky Turf Club, where he gave Arklo a real battle, you know, good enough to put him right there. It's up to Mike Smith to get him a trip. They don't call him Big Money Mike for nothing. Bigger Picture is my top pick. I'm going 357. You want an upset special with Marky's Water, the up and comer. Well, admittedly, this is also a little bit of a pet of mine because I loved him in the Del Mar Derby back last year. And he just I thought he was in a beautiful spot and then he never ran. Well, guess what? Then he was gone until April. So probably something happened there. And I just I kind of feel like the way that you had laid it out. Perhaps we haven't seen his best just yet, where I feel like with the vast majority of this field, you kind of know what you got with him. If all of a sudden Marquis Water takes a step forward, I think he's interesting at a price. And maybe he can tuck in right in behind the one and the five and work out a nice trip. Give me numbers, Matt. Six seven three five. Six seven three five for Matt. Three five seven for me in the Grade Two Hollywood Turf Cup. It's your DRF Bet Saturday race of the day. Bet this race. Bet this card. Three hundred percent deposit match is yours when you sign up for a new DRF Bets account at bets.drf.com. An approximate post time for the Hollywood Turf Cup. Three o'clock Pacific on a Saturday afternoon at Del Mar. Good luck.